Right, so these are a couple of new examples that I posted online um, for you guys to try. So today I'm gonna to record the solution so that you, you compare with your solutions. All right, so this is a <clears throat> example two in that slide uh, on um, mass balance. So the question is, uh, a storm uh, swear is a uh, carrying snow melt containing 12, 1.2 gram per liters of sodium chloride into a small stream. The stream has a natural occurring sodium chloride concentration 20 milligram per liter. Is the storm swear flow rate is 2000 liters per minute and the stream flow rate is two uh, meter cube per second. Uh, what is the concentration of the salt in the stream after the discharge point? Assume that the swear flow and the stream flows are completely mixed what the salt is, uh, and that the salt is conservative substance or it doesn't react, um, that the system is at a steady state. All right, so um, it, uh, it already draws the mass balance figure, means it shows a boundary, it shows the incoming inflow, inflow concentrations, it also shows the outgoing. So everything is kind of shown to you. All it asks you, what is the C mix um, on the effluents? So again, uh, anytime you have uh, you know, the biggest challenge here usually is to find, identify the different inputs and outputs, which is written here already. So I'm not going to spend more time on it. The first thing, let's start with the mass balance, the very typical mass balance equations. So first you have to say, oh no, anytime you are solving for this one, uh, there are a couple of things is written here. Number one, Salt is a conservative substance or it doesn't react. That means there is no reaction term. So reaction, if I say you know, the K uh, or D, DC by DT, reaction equal to zero. That means, you know, so that there is no reaction term. Another thing is steady state. That means the concentration of the contaminants anywhere is not going to change over time. So steady state means any DC by DT term, so the C mix or C effluence is equal to zero of the system. There is nothing being produced. So that's the extremely left side of the equation. So if you see what's the original mass balance equations, that's B DC by DT equal to um, Q1, Q in, C in, all Q in C in minus all Q out, C out. And then there is a reaction term, which is going to be zero because we didn't have those. I'm gonna write it for sake of it. So volume time DC by DT in the system. This is reaction. This is system. System means within that box, okay? All right, so we know that because of steady states, the left side is zero this side is zero. So we ended up having this term. You know? So anytime you have steady state, no reactions, you can write that you know, the mass balance equation is sum of everything that coming in for mass of contaminants coming in will be equal to, I'm just gonna write that first Q out, C out is zero. So that means you could say um, mass balance equation for no reactions, everything, everything coming in, all mass coming in, it should be all mass going out. See out. So Q is a flow rate, um, everything is there. So now all you have to do is solve for one of them. So now that's all is given because you are asked this one. Um, so let's solve this one. So as I said, let's write everything. C in so there are a couple of things in, so CSC uh, or QSC. So I'm gonna write that CSC, QSC. So these numbers we have to know. And then also stream, influence seems uh, C stream, that's uh, upstream and Q stream, those numbers. So let's write those number. We have to make sure that they're all same unit. Um, so same, so QSC is 1.2 gram per liter, so 1.2 gram per liter. QSC is a 200 liter per minute to 2000 liter per minute. 
CST is a 20 milligram per liter. And the stream flow rate is two meter cube per second. Okay. So now question is, um, the then we have also given our stream Q, Q um, when they mix together and the fluents, they mix the both flow is mixed so that you can say that QST plus QST. And we are asked what is Q or C mix, which you will get the equation from mass balance. So now if you see, you know, when you add stops or you multiply stop, you got to have, uh, you got to have at least, you know, some form of, uh, um, um, some form of, you know, unit size should be comparable or units should be same. So let's think of the concentrations, you know, the units are almost similar, except the fact that this is gram per liter, this is milligram per liter. So I'm going to change that to milligram. So one gram is 1000 milligram. So that way it take care of the milligram. So that should be 1200 milligram per liters. Same thing, the flow rate here, both are different. So it doesn't really matter what flow rate you want to use, but whichever you use, you should use the same thing all over. So let me change to liter per minute everything. It will be a big number. So you know that one meter cube is 1000 liter. And then we have second, it has to change to minute. So you know that, 60 second is one minute. So that will meter cube cancel, second cancel, so it becomes liter per meter cube. So that will be 60 times 1000 times two. So that will be 12 and we have four zero. Okay. And they said that will be a big number. So 120,000 liter per minute. So now let's see what is the C mix. You know from the mass balance equations, sum of all coming in, Q in, C in, should be sum of all going out. The only thing going out here is Q mix times C mix. If I, I'm just substituting everything that coming in. So everything that coming in would be QSC, CSC, and then the stream flow itself, Q stream, C stream. So that means if I ask C mix, that will be, if we rearrange the equations, it will be QSC, CSC, plus QST, CST divided by Q mix. Okay. So let's put those numbers. QSC. 2000, 1200, so 2000 liter per minute to 1200 milligram per liter. Plus QST is a 120,000 liter per minute time the concentration is a small 20 milligram per liter divided by is the sum of all the flow rate, 20,000 plus 2,000 liter per minute. Okay, so as you see, liter per minutes are there, so it cancel out the concentration of the fluent will be milligram per liters. So that's it, so you can solve it, I don't have to write it, uh, even in the exam, if you just write those numbers and it's the either cancel. So that means the answer would be whatever the number unit is very important um, in milligram per liter, so you can calculate. So that's the answers. So again, just to reiterate, all you have to do is first start with the, identify different terms, write the mass balance equations, see what are the assumptions, uh, because it doesn't have a steady states and also no reactions, you take those term out, then whatever the remaining, you have the final mass balance equations. In the exam, <clears throat> you don't have to solve everything or unless it is shown that write the equations and then solve it. 
Um, but if you recognize it, you can directly start with this as your mass balance equations and just write the assumption and then you solve for it. And then you just basically change the units and all that and you should have the answers. All right, so this is another example. Um, I read the question before. So uh, the only difference is that uh, you have a you have a pond here. You have also incoming, you have also outgoings. In fact, you have uh, one incoming, which is a uh, upstream flow. And then you have two outgoing. One is downstream, another is uh, <clears throat> the evaporations. And then also you have a reaction term, which was not there in the previous uh, examples. Um, and then also you have to see that here it's a, it doesn't ask another, if you see what the question is asked, uh, it says, uh, uh, you know, it says assume steady state. Uh, the reason is it is in, not, in nowhere it asks the concentration with time as a variable. So let me read the questions. A lake with certain volume given um, uh, is fed by a river discharging certain amount of uh, water inside it. Evaporation takes away some of the water per year uh, so that the downstream flow is uh, what's coming in minus what's uh, evaporated. Uh, so that's the downstream flow rate. The upstream river is polluted with a concentration of uh, six milligram per liter. Uh, so the only contaminant source here is the upstream. And inside the lake, the pollutant decays at a certain rate. It's given uh, 0 0.12 per year. What's that unit? We will learn that um, in uh, this week class. Uh, but at least, you know, just know that the unit of rate constant is uh, 0 0.12 per year. Uh, so that rate constant means Tc by dt equal to that rate constant times C. Uh, so change in reactions. Uh, concentrations um, uh, over time is is a is a function of that k times c or the concentration in the reactant, which is a lake here. Um, so now that you have known all those things, your uh, your goal is to what's the question here? Um, I think the question probably based on what is written here usually see downstream. You know, what's the downstream concentration? That's where you are mostly interested in or you are interested in what's the concentration of contaminants in the lake when the spill occurs. So see downstream. <clears throat> so now that you have identified all these uh, different terms, let's write the mass balance. Again, you start with uh, you know, the, the system is control volume. Let's say this is my control volume. I'm talking about the lake. So what is coming in and out is the based on the lake. So if I write this one, so I'm going to write that you now m, the volume of lake time dc by dt, what's occurring inside the lake, uh, should be what's coming in minus what's going out. So that will be q in, c in. So I'm not, now I'm going to write that expression anymore. I'll just write directly uh, everything that's coming in. So here, everything that's coming in is q upstream and and concentration river, okay? That's what is written. So this, this is coming in. Uh, what's going out uh, is what's, the, what's leaving the system. So Q downstream, I'm just gonna write down just for simplicity and C down. Is this the only thing that come going down or this is the only thing that's leaving the system? Actually, no, there is another system which evaporation. So I could write that. Uh, minus Q evaporations times C evaporations. Then you have also, so you account for this is all the things that are going in. This is all the things that are going out. Okay, so that's why there is a negative term. And then you have to have a reaction term. So which is uh, going to be uh, volume times, um, the, because this is a reaction, that's the negative term because with reaction things change decreases. So that will be minus Kc, okay? So let's write it. So how's the, now that you have write the equations, let's, uh, you know, I'm gonna copy this one to the next page so that we can start from here. 
So I'll say copy, and then let's go to the page. I'm I'll going to paste this one here. Um, oh, let's see how do I paste it. Paste. So all right. So that's the mass balance equations. Uh, first of all, you know, there are a couple of assumptions. Number one, it says steady state because I didn't ask anything. So uh, anything that changes with constant time. So if it is steady state, so that's one thing you could write, steady state. So that we can write dc by dt so because that expression is saying that imply that concentration change with time should be zero, okay? So that means this term is become zero. And there is another assumption. So as I said, you know, the, if you have a lake system here and this is coming coming in and going out, whatever coming out of the system, it's only the action inside. So the concentration should not change once they leave the system. So that means you could write C down and C, they're all same. Okay, so yeah, C equal to C down. So you could substitute those in the up, then you can come up with this answer, which will be um, Q up, C river, minus Q down. C down is, I put it as C because that's the, that's the assumption that everything that comes out of the system doesn't change with time or uh, it doesn't react anymore. So that means what's in the system is what live in the system. Then Q evaporations, think of another thing. Here is another uh, assumption. You know the contaminants are um, in water. When, when we evaporate water, usually the contaminant stays in the water. For instance, think of salt. When you evaporate them, uh, it doesn't really leave the system. You can assume that here. So you could write that because it nobody given the evaporation concentration, so you can assume that's zero because you know like salt it stays in water it doesn't evaporate with water so that term is now gone so anything that remaining is i'm going to write it b k c so now you are solving for c so that means if i take c solve it here is the equations i'm just going to write the final formula here so you basically take other side and that will be everything that come on from the C will be in the denominator. So that will be Q down plus B K. Okay. So that's the final answers. If you think of the expressions for the effluents, and now if you, if you are going to write that um, different terms, uh, for the exams, you've got to write the, all the equations. So Q up. So Q up, let's write Q up. What is Q up here? Nine, 10 to the power four meter Q per year. So nine, four meter Q per year. Concentration liver is six milligram per liter. So know that now this is meter cube, this is liter. So there is a mixed balance here. You can change it, but let's see if it can denominate on numerator all cancel out. Q downstream is given eight. Um, let's write what is a downstream. Eight, 10 to the four meter cube per year. So I'm just gonna write that. And then volume, volume of lake. It's given uh, volume of lake is um, this one, uh, two and 10 to the five meter Q. Meter Q. And the rate, which is uh, the reaction term, which is uh, 0 0.12 per year, okay? So I'm just gonna write that. 0.12 per year. 
So as you see over here, the denominators, the uh, is a, there is a plus sign here. Denominator, the 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 units is meter cube per year. This one meter cube per year. So these cancel. Okay. To take common from the denominator, that cancel out. So the actual answer will be milligram per liters. So I just uh, rearrange it now. Let's see. If you say nine fifty four no, four milligram per liter divided by so if you take ten to four out here, I'm just gonna write that. Uh, this will be eight this term and this term will be twenty times twelve so twenty four so that will be uh, two point four. Okay, and uh, everything cancel out. So you can write that whatever the expressions. If you have calculators, you will be able to calculate that value. That will be milligram per liters. Right. So that's the that's the solutions. Again, uh, let's reiterate what we did. We wrote the mass balance equations. We identified different terms. We we assume that you no, know, this is steady state. So that's why one of the term is zero. We also assume that concentration in evaporated water is zero because you know contaminants can't evaporate unless it's volatile, but that's another story. Um, but it's not given here, so you can assume that's zero. And then also we have uh, assumed that you now what is in the system because a completely mixed system, the lake water inside is what's lake or outside. So that's why the concentration downstream must be concentration in the lake. So when you put all those and rearrange the equation, you should be able to solve that value. All right, so that's the second example. All right, so that's another question. Um, it is an unsteady state question. So let's read it. Your stomach is a chemical reactor. When you devour a fast food, 90 cents, special hamburger in about a minute, it acts like a, an instantaneous input of 325 grams of food entering the stomach. So the amount of food that enters the stomach, which is a reactor is given to you uh, in a minute. In response, the stomach starts producing gas, gastric liquids, which is acid, um, which are continuously excreted into the stomach at a rate of 12 milliliters per minute as the hamburger is digested. So that means you're producing this acid to digest the hamburger at a certain rate. The fluid also leaves the stomach to the small intestine at a flow rate of 12 ml per minute uh, because that fluid is now uh, has to be absorbed. So that's, uh, that's also what's coming in. It has to leave the system. So the volume of liquid in the stomach stays exactly the same um, because what's coming in is what's leaving the system. And uh, so the, it says the volume of liquid in the stomach is 1.15 liters. So that's the volume of the reactor you can assume. The hamburger digestion rate uh, uh, constant is 1.33 hours inverse. So that's the rate constant. This is the rate at which the hamburger is being digested. Okay, so the question is, what kind of ideal reactor would you model the stomach as? All right, so I think you know this is a you know philosophical questions for ideal reactors. Now, obviously everything is not the same. What you can say is everything is mixed up here. So I would uh, you know we'll learn that today in this class. So this is an unfair question last class, but you know this might you might have learned in other classes. So let's for write you know complete uh, CSTR. You know people write CSTR or complete uh, uh, complete last year completely mixed reactor you now. So that's how we write this one. Um, so that's why, you know, we, we put those, uh, you know, we'll learn about that. So basically just learn that it's all mixed up together. So the concentration in the stomach is what's living the stomach. What fraction of the hamburger mass will remain undigested in your stomach one hour after you eat the hamburger? So again, uh, read this question. What fraction of the hamburger mass will remain undigested in your stomach one hour after you eat the hamburger. See, the question is given with a time number. So that means that indicates that the, the mass of hamburger is changing in your stomach with time. So that's 
the fact that something is changing with time, we can assume this is on steady state just because of that. So that means you know you this system is a unsteady state. So let me write the um, overall figure or mass balance. So let's write with this is our stomach. Okay, stomach has a volume and it has also reactions going on inside. So that's a K term is given. So the volume is liquid is 1.15 liters and the reaction rate is uh, 1.33 hour inverse. I'll just write that, okay. And you know that no acid is coming in at certain rate. So that's Q and the concentration of uh, uh, what's coming in is is also given, um, so there is no uh, no amount of uh, you know the 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 concentration of uh, stuff that's coming in is what's leaving the system. So that's uh, let's see, you know, the acid is produced, not anything else. You are not producing anything else. So that's why this is a this is a we'll we'll come to that, uh, and then the effluent is Q. Now the same amount flowing out of the system. So that would be, I'm just gonna write Q here, uh, 0 0.012 liter per minute. That's the amount of acid that is being produced and also leave the system. And then also you have a, you have a, you have a C out, C effluence or C that's coming out of the system. So I'm just gonna write C here, okay? Because that's the reason why What's going leaving the system is what's the what is inside the system. So I'm just gonna write keep the same C here because we keep doing the same thing multiple times. And then there is a there is a um, there is another uh, factors you know that we have to remember that you that you ingested food you know so the amount of food directly get into your body is m zero because that's what you eat. That's the amount of food is three hundred twenty five. Um, gram of hamburger that you ate okay so that's instantly dump into your system so now question is what's the what's the amount remaining okay so let's write it up uh, and see how the um, how the initial amount is changing with time so think of what's the time zero what happens initially when you there is a time zero there is no reaction started What's the, what's the inside the system? What's the concentration of that hamburger inside the system? Would be, um, C, I would say C0, would be whatever the in initial amount divided by the volume of the, the stomach. So that will be 325 gram by 1.15 liters, okay? So that's the gram per liter, so that's the amount um, of uh, concentration of food in your stomach at time t equal to zero. But as the time progress, you will start digesting. So I'm just gonna write it up here. You'll expect that this is this is what the start at C0, okay? And as the time progress, that, that acid will start digesting. So it will, it will not remain the same because it will start decreasing. So we'll come to the point, you know, how it decreases. I wrote it. No, look like exponential, but I wrote it. Uh, let's see whether that's true or not. Um, okay, now now let's uh, solve it. Again, mass balance equations. We have to solve it. Um, so it's not steady state. So that means you have to write the equations as v dc by dt is everything that coming in. So that will be q ci minus what's leaving the system q. C out, so which is C, C is the same as C out. So that's why I write it there. And then there is a reaction term. So the reaction term is uh, going to be um, volume times DC by DT. So that's DC by DT, the digestion rate is minus KC. So I'm just going to write that here. Okay. So again, what's coming in the system, there is no food coming in. So that's why we could write this term is zero. 
So now you have just basically this, 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 uh, this is the only equations that you have remaining. <clears throat> so if you divide B from both sides, so this will be DC by DT will be um, minus Q by V plus K times C. So now you have to integrate it. Uh, so I'm going to bring all the things uh, this side. So DC by C will be minus Q by V plus K times DT. Okay, I just rearrange the equations. And then I'm going to integrate it because this is a constant, the integration will be out of the system. So initially the amount is C0. Then you are asking what's the concentration after a time one hour. So this is the initial zero and this is one hour. Okay. So let's solve it. So this will be ln C. That's the integrations. C0, Ct will minus Q by V plus K. T is basically one hour. Okay. So T minus zero will be one hour minus zero, so this is one hour. So for now and now, let me write that you now. Just basically, just for simplicity, zero to one hour. So if you write this, balance these equations you now, so ln c, so it will be ln c t minus ln c zero um, would be this term, okay, I'm just going to write it here. And this term would be same as um, ln ct by c0 would be again same term. I'm just going to write that. That means ct by C0 would be exponential term of whatever that number is here, minus Q by V, okay, go on, made a mistake. Okay. So that will be, zero to T, okay, so that's, uh, I'll just write this term here, you know, so that it doesn't get confused, Q minus B, it's K, T, because T start from zero to T, okay. Mm -hmm. So now let's see, you know, the term is CT is C zero, exponentially, that's the equations, minus Q by V, plus k t okay so you just have to solve for it c0 is given because i i wrote it here 325 gram 325 gram 1.15 liter exponential term q is a uh, q um q is 0. 0 0.012 uh, liter per minute divided by volume is 1.15 liter. And then um, plus K is a uh, 1.13 per hour. Again, another thing, this is an hour, this is in minute. So you just have to change to minute. 60 minute is one hour, okay. So you have this term, balance out. Um, so the answer would be, let's see, little, little cancel. So this will be one over hour uh, times time would be one hour, okay? We can solve that answer. The answer would be in terms of gram. If you see everything is canceled out, so this would be gram per, um, so this will be gram per liters times liter here. Um, that would be 
Um, so this will be gram per liter, okay? The concentrations. So if you think of, you know, what's the remaining, this is the concentration term. And what's the amount of food remaining? That would be concentration time volume. So if I say, um, I'm just gonna write, there is no space here, I'm gonna write a different color. So M remaining P is T times a volume of stomach. So this will be gram per liter times liter. That will be, answer will be in gram. So the 46 gram is what my final calculations. I'll just write it here. Okay, so that's all. So again, uh, just to reiterate what we did, we, we set up the equations, we, we write the mass balance equation over here, and then we, we assume that you know, uh, incoming, there is no food coming in the acid, so that's just the only thing, then you rearrange the equations and solve it. Okay, that's all. All right, so this is the final, final questions, example questions we are going to solve. And so this is very specific. This is one of the questions in your textbook, uh, question number 19 uh, on page 43 of the handout, um, that's chapter one. So let's read the questions. It's uh, it's both uh, on steady state, uh, it's a two question actually. One is for steady state, another is for on steady state. So the question is a lagoon with volume of 1200 meter cube has been um, receiving a steady flow of a conservative waste at a rate of uh, 100 meter cube per day for uh, a long enough time to assume that the steady state conditions apply. The waste entering the lagoon has a concentration of 10 milligram per liter. Assume completely mixed conditions. Uh, that means, you know, when it says complete mixed conditions, that means, you know, what you can assume is what it's saying essentially is what's leaving the system is what inside the system because it's completely mixed. The first question is what would be the concentration of pollutant in the effluents leaving the lagoon? Uh, so that's very simple questions that we have been solving before. So let me draw the mass balance set up here. So that's the lagoon. The volume is given 1200 meter cube. And it says conservative waste. When it's a conservative waste, means it doesn't react. So reaction is zero. Okay. So there is no reactions. It's a conservative, um, and it's receiving a steady flow. So that means the Q is given. Q in is 100 meter cube per day. Okay. And you can assume because it's steady state, the flow, there is no accumulation of flow. So the Q in is, should be equal to Q out. Q in, so let's write this is as Q. And the concentration then coming into the system is uh, 10 milligrams. So this is C in is 10 milligram per liter, okay? And uh, what would be the concentration of pollutant the effluent leaving the lagoon, okay? Uh, so it says that you no, know, it is a, it is being steady state. Okay, so what it means steady state means whatever coming in is leaving the system. Okay, the reason is there is no reactions, there nothing is happening. So over time, you know, it doesn't change. There is no reason for this thing to change because there is no reaction. So intuitively, we know that this should be the same thing as what's leaving the system. But let's solve it by mass balance equation. So I'm going to solve question A. I'm going to change the color, okay? Let's write the mass balance equations. Again, we know this is steady state, uh, steady state. So steady state means the first term will be zero. So I'm just going to write, let's write the first thing. This C D T uh, will be, you know, what's the lagoon? Will be what's coming in the system. So Q, C in, what's leaving the system is Q, C, and there is no reactions, okay? So I'm just gonna write for sake of it, plus um, dc by dt reactions times volume, okay? So this is steady state, so this is zero. This is reaction, no reaction, conservative, so this is zero. So all we are saying is Q C in minus Q C is zero. 
So QQ cancel. So this is C in is C, which makes sense. Okay. The reason is, as I said, it's a steady state. You have been dumping something for a long time. After a point, everything in the store uh, in the lagoon water will be all contaminated. Exactly the same amount was coming in. So you almost replace all the water in the lagoon with the contaminated water. Uh, so that's why the effluent will be same. Now the second one is more interesting. Is that if the input waste concentration suddenly increased to um, 200 milligram per liter, what would be the concentration in the effluents after seven days? So there is a condition here. I'm just gonna write it here. So at time equal to zero, the input concentration suddenly increased to C in raised to 100 milligram per liter. At that time, what's leaving the system is still because it doesn't experience yet. So C, C was C uh, out T equal to zero was same thing, 10 milligram per liter because you just increase it. So it doesn't have a time to see that one. So at T equal to seven day, I'm asking what should be C out. So let's write the mass balance again because now it's on steady state. So you can't uh, ignore the, the the first term. Okay. So let me write that one. VTC by DT is Q in C in minus Q C. That's the living the system is the mix. There is no reaction, so you don't have to write the second term. So now you just have to solve these equations. So, um, uh, I mean, you can you can finally solve this one in any way you like, uh, but you know, just to make it simplicity, you know, because there is a term here, you basically have to bring all the C term in the left side, all the term in the right side. So, uh, but there is, a, there is a constant here, so that makes it difficult. So what we do is that there is a trick we should apply. Let's apply, you know, C, I'm just gonna write, y equal to c in because um, if you can write this one c in minus c so let's put this as a certain other value c in minus c so that means if you dy by dt would be dc in by d this is a constant so that will be zero minus dc by dt so that means if i substitute that value over there so this will become b this will be dy by dt, because dc dt is real this, and the right time will be qy. Now it's not easier to solve it, okay? So that means dy by y would be q by v dt, okay? Now let's integrate. So that means this integrations would be, this is constant, so I'll leave this out of the integrations. Let's write what should be written. So t equal to zero to t equal to seven day. So let's see, at t equal to zero, c, um, y equal to c in minus c, okay? So at t equal to zero, the effluent concentration, we know exactly what is that number is. So C in is 100 minus C out. That's the time initially, as I said, that was 10 milligram per liter. So this is 10. Uh, so that would be 90 milligram per liter. At t equal to seven day, we are finding what is that Y means, okay? So anyway, so I'm just gonna write as y0, okay? So this will be y0, y. And if you do this uh, integration, this will be ln y would be minus qyv um, t, okay? So if you do this one equation, this will be ln y minus ln y0 would be minus qt b. So that'll be ln 
y by y zero is minus q t b. If you do that other way, it will be y by y zero is the exponential minus q t b. So y would be y zero exponential minus q t over v. Let's write that number again, convert back to the actual equations. So, if you see, y would be what? y would be, as I said, y is c in minus c, okay? So, c in minus c is y zero, is given 90 milligram per liter. Um, then um, exponential minus q, the Q value is, uh, what's the number? Q is, Q is um, 100 meter Q per day, 100 meter Q per day. This is uh, the volume is 1200 meter Q. So 1200 meter Q times t is seven day, okay? Meter Q, meter Q cancel, they, they cancel that is just a number, 700 by 1200, okay? So I ask what is a CT, okay? That's the one we are asking. So to CT, if I arrange it, that will be C in, which is uh, what's coming in at that time, T in zero is, as you says, starting is now 100 milligrams, 100 milligram per liter minus, 90 milligram per liter exponential term minus 700 divided by 1200, whatever that number is. So you can solve it, okay? So that answer would be whatever that number, milligram per liter, okay? So again, what we did is we solved the mass balance equation, just the integration, so that's the calculus. All right, so that's all.